Hello, people of the tube, and especially Ryan Narona, who asked me a question about the menu book number 26. This is a race that I didn't do initially because I bought the wrong vehicle. However, he says, what about the dirt track race? It's not showing up in the bid, but it's one of the three races on menu 26. I keep spinning out on it, and I was wondering if you had any settings that you would recommend. Now, I have already done a video where I go through the vehicle, the buying of it, the setting up, tuning, etc. So I'll link to that in the description below. I did have one or two issues in that video. It wasn't very clean. Uh, we did do a 360 and I wanted to do another run where I was going to try for a clean race and just see how quickly after running that one we could do that. Now for full disclosure, um, we are running on the uh, hard AI settings. Uh, we'll probably have a look at those in a moment. And this was my third attempt. I did reset the race twice before I went clean and I reset the video within the first half a lap, if I recall correctly. So it's not like I've been running this for days and days and days. Um, I did do this fairly quickly applying what we had already learned. So this is just showing that I am on the hard settings for this particular race and so no smoke and mirrors. So we'll just come out of there. We'll go into the race. The one big difference between this vehicle and the one previously is I have put a livery on it. Does a paint scheme make all the difference? Oh boy, yes it does, as we're going to see. Actually, it doesn't, it makes no difference whatsoever. Alas, I did put a paint scheme on this one just for the replay video and because it's nice to have liveries on. So what we're doing now is just simply building on what we learnt in the first few runs. I'll remind you that I have reset this race twice between getting that first place. So twice since the first video and this one, that's all. It's not that I've been sitting here playing this for hours and hours and hours on end. Uh, that wasn't the case. I did uh, actually did all of this over a lunch hour, if I'm perfectly honest. So what we're trying to do here is just make our way through this traffic as quickly as we can but also thinking about where our overtakes are going to happen, but also being very aware of the jumps and the bumps in this particular racetrack. In particular, I'm trying to keep it more in this sort of gravel area rather than getting off into the grass area where there are a few big old bumps that can, um, can trip, trip you up. We did get a yellow flag there, which has bunched all of these cars, uh, all these trucks up quite a bit. So now we have got a right old gaggle of vehicles we've got to overtake. I'm lining up on the black one here just to see if we can follow him through on the yellow one, which did work. And then I'm going to come across to the left hand side to see if we can get around the outside of the black one. And we're going to do the grey one into the bargain. A slight nudge on the barrier, which was unfortunate. I thought that might have cost us a clean race. But we did actually get away with it as we'll see at the end again that white one getting really out of shape he was across the track facing the left i assumed he would therefore go across to the left so i went to the right that's another thing to watch out for when you are racing on the dirt is the attitude of the other cars around you and where they're going to end up over the jumps and through the corners sometimes you can get a quick win by just going offline and positioning your truck a little bit more differently. So you'll notice here that I'm not taking huge jumps on this particular run. Just got into the back of the blue one here, just following him through. He's got my line and I want to keep that line. So we'll just go up the inside. So again here, much slower, much less air over that jump, which enables us to get the wheels back on the ground quicker to get ourselves aligned up more quickly and then get the power down more quickly to get chasing after what is already the first place truck and we're only on lap two and you can see through here by keeping this a lot easier and more gentle that we have caught up with the race leader so much quicker now you'll also notice the steering inputs they aren't quite as wild if you just look at the red dot above the speedometer just where the forward badge is my steering inputs are not quite as wild as they were in the previous race so when you know the track and you're familiar with the 
physics of the truck that you're running and, and how it behaves, then you can start to refine your driving a little bit more. And you'll notice now that we are in first position, we're on lap three, and rather than charging away, I've actually backed off a lot. If you look at the throttle inputs, they are a lot less, particularly in the corners, than I had before. Big slide there, but loads of time just to correct it. Little rise there, which I just let the car run, the, the truck even just run over. Watching for these jumps and these bumps in the track, and just trying not to get too much air. I want to keep this truck in control as much as possible. Pretty much staying in third gear most of the time through this particular race. That enabled the tra truck to be a, a lot more settled and a lot more controlled. So if you are really struggling, then uh, maybe Ryan, just leave it in third gear and see how that goes. There'll be occasions where you will need to drop it down into second and take it up into fourth. But the majority of the time, especially now that I'm out front, I'm just leaving it in its third gear and it's just happy. This truck is settled turning in nice and early, letting the back drift around a little bit, just catching it with the opposite lock on the steering, just working really hard to keep this all together. And then we come across the line, only we're just under a second in front of the truck behind. I was keeping an eye on the distance to the truck behind, um, but we were backing off, keeping it clean, keeping it tidy. And I actually felt really, really good at the end of that race. So 0.8 of a second ahead of the truck behind. We do get the clean race bonus, which is what I was going for in this particular race and showing that even on hard settings with the truck set up the way that I have, then you can do it. Did that paint job make all the difference? Do you know what? I don't know. It makes you feel good when you're in a truck that looks good. Maybe that does make a slight difference. I don't know. Uh, technically it doesn't, but it's all in the mind. So I'm just going to leave the replay to run so that you can compare the the way that this truck is moving around compared to the first race that we did. Hopefully you're going to see that that back end is not stepping out nearly as much as it was in the first race. So uh, a, a lot fewer or, or, or much fewer uh, steering inputs. Those inputs that I am doing are a lot less and a lot more refined. Uh, I'm not swinging the steering wheel all over the place. Using the power just to slide through some of these corners. Making sure that uh, you've got the vehicle pointing in the right direction before you hit the accelerator or, or the throttle. And you'll notice there over that jump, that's one of the big jumps. Backed out with it massively just to try and get as little air as possible. Also over those two jumps there and this one, which often sends me wide and into the barrier. Just tone it down. Don't look for the massive air that looks great because it does unsettle the balance of the, uh, the truck significantly. Uh, and then you're fighting it, losing time, and you run the big risk of spinning the vehicle. Through here, we were just following the black one to do the overtake on the yellow and then a slingshot around the outside, getting onto the brakes. We did kiss the barrier through there, just very, very gently, um, but we got away with that one. The green one came over and gave us a little nudge on the way through, just showing in the back of the truck sliding around there as we go past. The white one was a nice clean overtake, trying to stay on the gravel part rather than the grass. The grass was catching me out with some pretty hairy bumps. So uh, as in there, you can see I've just cut that corner and a big dip unset the vehicle, knew it was coming, was on the brake, slowed it down. Again, learning and knowing the track, not just the corners, but the bumps on this one is very, very key in my mind. Nice little slide through there. Again, a bit of a slide on the back end, but it's all under control. It's not really sideways. Nice little move on the blue one there. Not too mad over the bump. You can see that the attitude of my car was similar to the AI car behind me. Again, through here, just keeping a straight line. Not massive jumps. Again, through there, just making sure that if you are going to take a jump, that you try and get the truck facing the direction of travel at when you land. 
so that you can quickly get that vehicle back under control, get the power down, and you're not fighting the car sliding this way or the other and heading towards barriers and spinning. Uh, this run was just so much easier. It was so much cleaner, far less steering inputs. Braking and accelerator was just dancing on those two pedals all the time just to try and keep the balance of the vehicle. So I think at this point we're out in front. The uh, greeny turquoisey truck was chasing me down all the way through here, but I was just keeping my mind on the job in hand, just managing the gap to the truck behind. But again, just trying not to get too much sideways action. I got a big sideways slide through that corner just before. Look how close he is to me now. That big slide has cost me so much time. Now I've just got little slides trying to get the power down much earlier as we exit the corners to try and build that gap up. Again, I wasn't thinking too much about the vehicle behind. I was just trying to keep it in, in order. Did you just see there that my jump was much more controlled than his? He landed on the front wheel, had to then correct. That's given us just a little bit of extra distance between us and the vehicle behind. That's what you want to look for, just trying to keep it nice and even. Now, remember, I am taking this slow through here. This is a difficult overtaking place and I could go through here a lot, lot faster, but I just wanted to keep it even, keep it nice and slow, keep it smooth. And that's why that truck is right with me. But again, just a couple of little corners and we've managed to pull away. And there you go. First place, clean race on the AI hard settings. Hope you found this video useful and in particular, the one before. I'll link to both videos in the descriptions below. But there we are, Ryan. First place in the Ford F-150 SVT Raptor with a few modifications. So basically weight saving, brake upgrades, and a few other bits and pieces, the exhaust and the like. Uh, but that's how I do it. I'm not gonna say I'm the best driver in the world. I am clearly not. There will be people that will be able to do it faster and more smoothly than me. But that's how an average driver does it. If you like this video, please hit the like button. If you haven't already subscribed, please consider subscribing to support the channel. In the meantime, I look forward to seeing you on another video coming very soon. Stay safe, stay well, everyone. Bye-bye.